Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Ruben Cusceno and I'm the founder of PXLCs, a digital solutions provider. I have with me as well Andy Hook from Cisco to answer any questions of your question during this online session. Uh, so the plan is for, for the next 40 minutes, um, we will help you discover on how Cisco Umbrella can amplify your security across enterprise, your enterprise network, but from any device, from anywhere and keep it safe. So this is the agenda that we put together. Um, so we're going to go over um, threats landscape. Um, understand where we were, where we are at the moment, um, and also what, what shall we expect from the, from the, from the future. Um, DNS security, go a little bit over what is DNS, why do we need DNS security at all, uh, and actually how we can fit together uh, the, two, the two parts of it. Um, we go also going to talk about uh, the Cisco umbrella, so what the Cisco umbrella uh, can do uh, on your network enterprise, uh, but also how can you, uh, in fact, protect your users, whatever they are uh, connected. Uh, we definitely going to have an interesting demo um, and hopefully everything goes well with demos. Um, we going to definitely show you a, a little bit how actually Cisco Umbrella works behind the scenes in terms of how you set it up um, the Cisco umbrella environment and actually how can you look uh, things things happen um, under the hood. Also the secure integration, which I believe is actually a key part um, of the Cisco portfolio at the moment. And also we're gonna uh, give, uh, give you a look, a, a briefly a look on actually you can uh, integrate uh, that with, with Meraki when it comes to protect your Wi-Fi and also uh, your, um, your internal network. Um, the end of the session, we're gonna have a q and It's gonna be, all questions gonna be answered by me and by Andy from Cisco as well. Um, and of course, there is uh, a gift at the end if you stay until until the end. Okay, okay, let's go. So threat landscape. So back in 2000, 2000, actually, the way we look at it was, of course, we definitely had uh, the threats that we have to do, right? And, but also the the measure or the response. Of solution that we had over that for that particular time was definitely an antivirus base, a very rudimentary uh, solution that um, you know at that time was 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 working uh, perfectly. Um, but there are of course um, uh, always some something that we have to do uh, first before before we go on on that level. Um, of course. The threat landscape is important um, to always to take a look uh, uh, in the rear view mirror uh, once in a while. Um, as, as we drive, in, not only you get a good look uh, on what is behind you, but you uh, often spot what is coming up uh, and, of course, set to take overtake you. Um, we we definitely gonna go over a, a few examples here in a minute. Um, and actually, this is actually the, the 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 rear view mirror that, as 2000, I was explaining before. So as the time goes on, of course, we have a different, uh, more smart um, threats where it comes spyware, rootkits. Back 2005, we use a different uh, set of tools to protect the environment, uh, your network, and your business, of course. Um, in 2010, actually, we're getting uh, more adverse, advanced uh, persistent threats, which is called APTs uh, or cyberware, right? So where we start actually having to use sandboxing due to the, the, the behavior of some of these, um, of these um, threats, uh, but also start using global reputation to actually um, map add out all these threats and actually the, what relation they do have. 
um, today and tomorrow, we what we do have is we increase massively the attack surface, right? When it comes to mobility in cloud, today a user can be anywhere, right? Can be using you know um, an iPad, an Android, or eventually you know a laptop, uh, any kind of device that you know has connectivity. But not only that, IoT as well is quite important as well, which is actually one of the um, one of the um, the hot topics in in the industry at the moment is uh, the IoT, the attacks that actually have been launched against um, against uh, IoT. Not not only that, um, not only that. So if we if we look at it uh, at the recent recent today. Uh, if we actually take uh, modular threats like uh, Emotet or VPN filter, for example, these are threats that actually can deliver uh, an on-demand menu of attacks and threats uh, depending on which device is infected or is intended uh, goal of the attacker. Uh, we saw uh, plenty of such modular threats in recent history uh, and wouldn't be surprised actually if we see more of those in the future. Uh, but email remains remain email remains the, the the darling delivery method of attackers, which threats from crypto mining to emotet uh, is using is it to spread. It also highly likely that other threats such as an authorized MDM profile used to uh, highlights how critical it is to keep a close eye on what is coming is to box. So is what actually is the modus operandi, right? So this basically um, actor, let's put it. So um, the, revenue, the revenue generation continues uh, to be the primary motivation for, for attackers. Uh, malware follows mining, right? So crypto mining threats, for instance, um, they are very focused on, on this goal. Uh, meanwhile, for example, Emotet is pivoted to a threat distribution network, uh, which actually is ca capitalizes on a very a variety of options uh, to to make to make money. Um, so, what what can customers do to avoid um, to avoid to be on the newspaper, right? So. And actually, that is the question that we re actually receive a lot of time. So, how actually can I protect myself? You know, to be on the on the news. Well, this is of course is the worst nightmare for for every for every single customer, right? Showing on on the news for for the wrong reasons. Um, these multiple we we hear multiple cases every single day. The press is full of recent breaches. Do ransomware and other. Uh, Another variety of um, threats. Uh, of course, this creates this is, a, is, is, a, is it creates a chaos in in stops the organization uh, for sometimes a few hours or or even days. It really depends of uh, the size of of, of the attack. Um, and the most important or the most actually uh, difficult question for these businesses is actually how they calculate. Um, the full the full damage um, on 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 the on the bridge, uh, I think. But also important is the brand, right? Because the brand takes years to build and maintain. So a certain attack, a certain bridge actually can damage um, can ma can damage for life the, the brand um, of of this organization. So and that is actually uh, we are here today. So to show actually how Cisco Umbrella actually. Can help you um, avoid um, a, as a single point of contact with the internet. So the, your would be your primary um, tool. Basically, you know, keep the threats out of your environment. So DNS. <coughs> so DNS is. You know, it's been in the industry since the, the internet was born almost, right? So, because at some point we realized that keeping um, numbers rather than names will be for human beings as us, would be very complicated. So actually, we, um, the industry came up with 
uh, with the DNS, which basically maps out a name to a certain IP. So that is when we you type um, google.com, automatically behind the scenes, there is a DNS query, which basically, you know, say ask um, to a DNS server where you know, what IP actually translates that name into, and automatically your browser knows all of that and automatically automatically to the right to the right website in the right part of the world. Um, so when you think why 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 is useful from a security perspective? Uh, so DNS is is actually fundamental how how the internet works and and uses in every single uh, device um, of your network in order to connect to to internet. Um, we 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 they are already relying on something to handle their recursive DNS traffic, and it's mostly likely to be your ISP. So what this means is all these DNS queries that when you try when you browse the internet, they potentially most of them I would say probably ninety nine or one hundred percent for sure they are um, uh, on your ISP. But your ISP doesn't give you the visibility that, in fact, Cisco and Brother can give you. So, um, going in this case, when it comes to security, Cisco and Brother is going to give you an extra security of that. So, it's basically the same mechanism that is using all the internet connection and is really useful to um, for uncovering where all these malicious activity are on the internet and then block and devices from going there. Um, this data can be analyzed, um, of course, and turned into threat intelligence, uh, and more importantly, uh, being enforced. So that is um, what DNS actually can do for you, not only resolve DNS queries, not only give you access to websites, but also bring the DNS security, which actually says what is good and what is bad, and actually block and, and, and enforce it. So, how actually, how actually, um, Umbrella can fit your your organization? So, today there is uh, the workforce is, is 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 moving around, right? So, where we in a few back we were about to see, you know, everyone on prem, everyone in the office. Today, that is not that that is not real anymore. So, we have users working from home working from um, from different countries and of course that is a potential risk right so actually the, the main tools that you 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 have your security layers your security stack is usually on-prem your old firewalls your all other tools that you have in place that are on on-prem so actually a user can take with him with that right so actually here comes the the umbrella uh, which basically can follow uh, your users so we can follow any device where they are so we can actually can have um, as we say, say see here uh, we can have the umbrella at the network and endpoint right where is the end uh, headquarters can be also um, on the branch but also you have the the opportunity to here to have on your endpoint, basically a roaming client, which is users that works from from home, as I was as I was explaining earlier. So, <clears throat> um, so, so yeah, what what we hear from customers actually is that despite despite of the existing security products deployed, they they are still dealing to do with many malware infections um, and in phishing attacks. Um, there are many ways that malware can get in, which is why it's important to have multiple layers of security. I was explaining earlier, right? So, <clears throat> since um, it's a 100% cloud security, so in, in, in hosted on internet, security should start at the DNS layer, right? So, it's your first point of contact with the internet if we think about it earlier I was explaining when you browse the internet DNS queries and etc so it's but have in mind this is not a replacement for other solutions but an additional layer that complements that you have already and of course you can block malware on your network and and, and endpoints but 
more important is why wait until malware reach your the endpoint when you can block threats out of the internet. If you consider how malware malware is often downloaded or how phishing attack works and how malware was started, it often happens on the internet. So majority of the traffic these days is start is starting being consumed on, on the cloud basis because all these SaaS applications, so everything is cloud-based now. So actually, if you don't have a good strategy of uh, protect your your users, your roaming users from actually, uh, you know, from the cloud itself, uh, you you definitely can be um, can be in trouble. So the 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 actually the brilliant the brilliant part of DNS actually is 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 every it's agnostic. So it, whatever you have on prem. Uh, other solutions, um, it, it's going to work because actually is a, is a protocol, is a ratified protocol, which actually works for with any single um, other other kind of devices. So it can be IoT or other uh, vendors. Um, so of course, the deployment of it is very quickly, right? So we can actually we've done recently a deployment for a customer, which actually took us around thirty minutes, actually was not was not much uh, more than that and we show we're going to show um over the demo and actually how we how we can achieve that <clears throat> so, um so since uh, like i was saying before um enforcement is is the priority here when it comes to the first uh, the first contact with uh, with the internet right so Umbrella not only protects against, um, against initial infection, Umbrella also prevents command and control, as we also know uh, as the C2 calls. Um, so even if the device, even if the device is becoming infected in other ways, Umbrella blocks the communication at, at that server. So Stopping data exfiltration or download uh, of, of ransomware keys, of course, this is most of the key parts for uh, probably the previous malware or ransomware, actually, as we know it today. Um, so the, 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 C2, the C2 actually callbacks are blocked using the same DNS enforcement process described um, earlier. Um, and, and the event, in the event that, in fact, that a malicious payload is designed to bypass a DNS, that can happen, right? So actually, you can have a ransomware rather than use DNS. Actually, you can use um, a direct IP connection. So actually, it doesn't rely on, on, on DNS. So, and actually, uh, Umbrella also um, is able to see that and, and block it. How it does? So it, of course, does an enforcement at, um, at the IP level as well, okay? <clears throat> okay, so how, in fact, this, um, how, in fact, that Cisco umbrella works? So, for example, we have two scenarios here. Um, we have two scenarios here, here. So the left side, actually, when you try to browse a, a website, which we know actually is malign, um, and actually when you browse badguys.com, what happens is your device here on the right, oh, sorry, on the left, DNS query to Umbrella, Umbrella automatically knows that actually that um, is a bad website and automatically replies back to the initial uh, to the initial user or browser depends on what you, the, the user is using and actually send an ip address um or a url in this case sorry sends an url what says basically that okay so if you want to go to that particular website i'm going to send you in fact to this one which in this case is going to be basically an umbrella uh, blocking land page and in this case, in the back, in the back of the scene, so all these uh, denied uh, and blocking uh, land page um, uh, requests are are locked. So in fact, you can look at your reporting and see 
um, and see all these uh, these logs on the um, on the on the on the umbrella page. In fact, that you can see which user and which website and when he did it. So actually, you can see actually if that is a was a, a user that clicked on the link that he shouldn't, or was something else. So actually, part of the investigation is understand actually why that happened to identify the root cause for it. Um, on the right side, what we have actually is a normal connection. So the user again requests goodguys.com, a DNS query, goes to Umbrella. And the Umbrella replies back, okay, so actually this is a nine um, um, website. So actually, um, this is actually the, the IP for it. And automatically the session is established between um, the, um, the device and, uh, and, and the browser sorry the in the website okay some customers actually have some um queries about because all this logging required right it has to be stored somewhere right and uh do the the you gdpr and etc which i'm not going to cover here in this session um there are definitely there were concerns about actually where all this data is stored. So um, Cisco Umbrella uh, data or store uh, data logging actually is uh, stored in EU. So in one of the data centers um, of Umbrella. So which is in this case can be in Frankfurt. <clears throat> so yeah, this is actually to make you compliant uh, against the GDPR, um, uh, against the GDPR, essentially. But also, if you are, uh, if you have branches in, if you have branches in US, for example, if that is your uh, multi-global organization, there is a data center as well in in US. Actually, you can keep those uh, separated. Okay, so how how the fabric the fabric looks like? uh for um for for umbrella so so this is actually the secret sauce uh that's working behind the scenes for um, for umbrella so the first the first is the the umbrella global network which actually is is the the fabric um of the of the internet so cisco peers over just to have some give you some numbers cisco uh, with over 600 top uh, internet service providers and content delivery networks to basically keep this all activity and all resiliency uh, to 100 um, percent so and of course as the internet population grows umbrella uh, umbrella being handling roughly roughly in mind that two percent of the world's activity uh, for for the past for the past five years, so <clears throat> in fact this actually is a huge huge percentage for um, for for a single for a single provider. Um, today, well, of course these numbers keep changing, right? But today um, today DNS requests uh, handles DNS requests from um, 85, 85 million users every every day. So, as you can see, um, this actually is resilient, 100% um, uptime since 2006. Have in mind, uh, because they actually have a, a, a actually a, a interesting architecture about using any cost. Uh, but yeah, I will not go over there. Uh, but definitely, um, actually, is is is, is very and as you can see actually all the pops and they have around three, 30 data centers around the world uh, where actually they have small instances of um, instances of Cisco umbrella and actually your traffic is is, is shift through uh, the closest data center um, where we have <clears throat> here are what I was talking about Okay, so this is if you if you like numbers, here are some of the numbers that um, are part of um, the, the Cisco umbrella. So um, you know it's, it keeps growing all the time. Um, yeah, one hundred and sixty, one hundred and sixty plus countries worldwide. 
so around 15,000 uh, um, 15, enterprise customers and yeah the list goes on <clears throat> all right so this is um just control the time here okay so this is i think we have to go fast i think i have to move okay so I lost here some time um, okay okay so regards the cisco secure internet gateway vision so these are the uh, the, the cisco vision in terms of uh, internet gateway um basically and um of course we can look at here the dns layer which is uh, currently what we have on the left side is the dns layer proxy file inspection sandbox third party and cas b coming up is going to be the app visibility and control inbound inspection and of course another another project another project so most of you probably have some of these tools already or some of these solutions already in your um in your um network so so actually i got here from andy a note that actually app visibility is already there no actually it's quite right yeah so so in in definitely um we are talking here on, on the dns layer at the moment but definitely you have other other um tools uh solutions that you have already um in in your in your network um in your network <clears throat> all right so we're gonna go quickly i think i've lost here um the con control of time so right ransomware example so how actually this looks like a ransomware uh, example so mapping attack infrastructure so <clears throat> so this is actually a real world example of, of a ransomware attack and actually how umbrella works to block the threat before launch okay so actually you can see it was in this case was locky uh actually was uh umbrella detected on the on the 17th of august and actually virus total actually only reported on the on in september so this actually how this is actually how the umbrella does uh, behind behind the scenes. So actually map um, it, it maps basically the information between IPs and actually other uh, who is um, uh, data um, in, and actually it start process it start process with the domain already blocked uh, and you know use statistic models. Uh, that actually he, how he uncovers the whole the whole scene here for for this particular malware. So it come it starts with basically uh, a domain IP association and understand what IPs are are behind it. And again, it's basically using um, DGA, which is domain generation algorithm um uh, is what means dga what it basically does is or what this uh actor does is actually he creates domains based on an algorithm that is why you see here this uh for example was um different and they actually they, they can reverse engineer it and actually they know actually what kind of domain they're going to be generated from uh from a particular dns uh, name so <clears throat> Another one, so threat grid actually is one of the products from Cisco and actually creates his hashes and actually he's how actually he can rather than inspect every single file, it creates a CHA256 and actually um, create a signature for that particular uh, for that particular domain file. So he knows exactly how it looks like. So and of course he start mapping out uh, network infrastructure so where is based if it's based in you know um, in uh, one country multiple countries and actually <clears throat> also look at the who is data to see who registered when was registered and actually this is actually a good in interesting example of how actually you can visualize the infrastructure uh, used from uh, a particular a particular ransomware uh actually i think it's helped very um uh, a lot customers to understand actually visualize actually what domains have been created 
Uh, so this is one, two, so this is a different uh, network provider and there are around, um, I think, um, I took information, uh, um, it was about 600 something, I believe. Uh, I think it was 1,000, yeah. It was 1,000 basically domains generated around Loki. So you can have an idea and that, you know, how can actually can you will be protected, you know, uh, using other tools. So, um, okay. So, all right. So, um, <clears throat> well, we're going to have now going through the demo. Um, we're going to run to uh, the umbrella, Meraki. So, <clears throat> I'm, but I'm going to focus more on the umbrella and actually the Meraki integration, actually how you can um, integrate umbrella in Meraki for customers actually that are currently um they have meraki um and they actually they are not maximizing their um their solution at the moment actually is something that they can do it here on this session as well um okay let's oops not this one not this one okay let's go here and okay Okay, umbrella, umbrella. Session failed. Um, I have here the okay, okay, here we go. Okay, and yeah, we can go here on this one. Right, so this usually is the dashboard here. <clears throat> this actually is the dashboard that you see when you log in on the umbrella. So what you see is what you see is um, basically the number of requests uh, that actually DNS handle um, that you sent through Umbrella blocks actually uh, the number of, uh, of security as well uh, blocks. So actually this is actually the pretty pretty actual report regards it. So most important the most important actually I, I like to show customers actually is how these blocks are based on or based on the security category right so you have categories here which is called malware phishing command and control crypto 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 mining so <clears throat> over the last over the the threat landscape uh definitely there is lots of uh crypto mining um over the last well, it's starting ramping up now, uh, a lot of crypto mining um, over the web. So that is something that actually we can we can see here as well. So, but malware actually is one of the most uh, critical ones currently. So, <clears throat> for example, that we can see here that a lot of requests have been uh, blocked marked as per uh, the intelligent intelligent threat uh, researchers from 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 Cisco so um, these are all the, the the blocked requests so okay you have other you have other um, secure categories, command and control, and crypto management things. So here actually is really interesting, which are actually um, the app discovery. So actually, this is really important when you understand um, in terms of shadow IT that you have in your uh, you know in your network, in your users specifically. Because actually, if you look at it here quickly, you can see applications that have been used uh, through your through your branches headquarters or even roaming uh, users 
as we call it, um, remote workers, right? So actually you can see everything uh, laid out here as a, as a, as a, as a per application. So for example, if you go here to the P2P, right, we can see actually work, what P2P applications that have been used. Uh, and in fact, you can map those out to actually what identities or networks or specific users that have been uh, using that. So actually you can uh, drill down to the point where actually you can see what user actually have been using this particular application, okay? Um, or if actually if application that has been approved um, by, by your security policy, you definitely can approve that application and that, you know, that's all good, no problem at all. Or actually if you don't approve, uh, of course you can mark it or not approve, but important most important is actually if you want to block those kind of applications so if you want to block those kind of applications you just click block this app and automatically um the whole basic environment is not going to be able to access that 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 particular that particular application so this is basically um the remediation that um I, I usually been working with some customers because usually they come to to us and say um, we we don't know actually what applications the users have installed um, because most of most of these applications these days they don't need you don't need to install them so actually the users don't need to have an administrative administr uh, administrative role under the the laptop they are using download something uh, an act uh, an application that doesn't require installation so it, um, you know on, on that fashion so and actually how do you block that right so um, and actually from this perspective in fact that you can block it uh, even if the user has that behavior so it's very very uh, actually is very important for, um, for 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 your network to keep it uh, safe and of course clean okay okay so I basically uh, went through the a little bit of the dashboard um, these actually here are um, the security quest that's being blocked as per identity we're going to go there in a second uh, just to have the overall basically the number of requests so you can see actually here uh, who actually has been um, or the location or or, or the location or even user actually had has been more uh, unfortunately you know uh, having more actually anything telling me here actually his home network which is probably uh five users with 10 users he has seen 681 i think it was 600 or 611 well something around 600 plus of different applications so imagine and this is just for a 10 uh, a 10 uh, device uh, a 10 device you know um, um, user base imagine now if you have 100 users plus uh, printers plus you know all the IOT you might have servers and etc imagine actually how many you can uncover using uh, using uh, using this particular uh, approach so it's very very important okay in terms of deployments <clears throat> uh, going quickly here so this is actually where you set up your um, networks, um, of course, and you apply a bit slow, and actually you apply your policies. So this particular policy to apply to that um, identity um, actually has, for example, uh, specific networks those are these three ones let's cancel and actually it has as well what kind of content that you want to block right it can be social media as you can see here for example you can actually block for a particular location or for a particular user as we call identity you actually can block that on a per user basis so but have in mind that you don't want to create complexity right find the find the common ground uh, between actually what the user should be using or what would the user shouldn't be using don't try to basically put too much granularity on it because otherwise 
say you're going to manage it, manage it, right? So make sure it actually it keeps simple, but at the same at the same time, you know, you 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 know what you have configured, and actually you know what kind of um, complexity and operations and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, here actually is one interesting. Thing. Actually, you can actually um, page for when the customer or the DNS actually uh, gets blocked and the user gets redirected. I was explaining in one of the slides earlier. Um, so actually this is the page where you basically get redirected to a landing page and the user is gonna have just a page saying, well, dear user, this actually domain is being blocked um, or blacklisted as well, can be, uh, that's the case. Uh, you can't, uh, you actually uh, access this particular okay in this particular this particular page so you have to contact your um, your IT security manager to basically your your manager to actually um, allow, allow that to go through so um, so yeah there is always a default policy that comes by default which basically um, allows everything but block by default a uh, whole malware and, and etc so um, that usually is what you have uh, pre-configured when you when you basically start using uh, Umbrella. Um, <clears throat> so I was here. So if you were, if you want to add another one, you can use it per, uh, of course, IPv4, or IPv6. You can use a slash uh, 32, which is basically the IP address, or in fact, or you can use multiple ranges. That's not a problem. Um, Keep the names consistent. So actually, because the reporting is going to show the names that you are giving here, so make sure that actually you have the the names correct. So actually, follow a convention. And when it comes to the report, actually you can pre, um, view the the report probably in, in, in the names that you put here make sense on the report. Um, roaming roaming computers. We don't have one here, but roaming computers is. Um, can be via any connects the roaming uh, security module or actually can be um over the um, or through the the, the cisco <coughs> umbrella agent that actually you can install uh, as well so if you are a, a customer that use any connect you can automatically download um, the roaming security module in um, automatically you can use that part of your um remote connection on, on the any connect so actually there is a new model on um <clears throat> on the on the any connect um we also support mdm here um chrome chromebooks as well so actually you can uh, configure uh chromebooks through uh natively via umbrella um internal size so if you actually have room user actually you have you want to enforce all DNS queries through Umbrella, except your local domain, right? So everything goes to to the public cloud except your internal domain. So that is usually the um, um, the default because otherwise everything goes to the cloud, and of course your internal domains or everything that you are using internally is going to fail because uh, that's that's not going to buy it's going not going to bypass uh, the the DNS the, the the Cisco Umbrella cloud. So another important for advanced, um, which I really, um, which I really recommend for for customers, the advanced setup. So the advanced setup is where you integrate the Active Directory and actually you push um, the us the users out. Uh, so actually on the report and uh, actually on the the report, yeah. So actually you can see, or on the dashboard, actually you can see the real names the users rather than just you know a, a public ip because uh, that otherwise not going to give you much um so yeah so actually the the, the advanced deployment um it's it's really important so actually you can uh, have a more um you can actually have a more uh, deep insight of who and when is trying to you know consume or, or get to a web a particular website that shouldn't or it should but you know somehow is, is being blocked so for troubleshooting purposes quite very important as well uh so what this requires is just deploying deploying a, a virtual appliance on on prem so actually all dns traffic goes through that virtual appliance and everything is encrypted everything is encrypted between the on-prem that virtual appliance and the Cisco umbrella. So 
um, just to, to let you know. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so actually that is where you configure um, the Active Directory uh, through it. Actually, it's by the default. So you can have multiple ones. If you actually have a mesh of um, multiple organizations, um, but be aware that um, as far as you have the, the convention name correct, that should, should be a problem. We, we had some deployment where a uh, customer had different active directories, so we, we had to work it out in a different way. But yeah, that will be our top discussion. Um, okay, so, so we, we were here before, but so actually this is where you uh, configure the whole policies. You can add a new policy as per user, group, network device, uh, roaming computer, you, you have it those all here. So you just select what you, actually I don't have any users, use them all. That is where you select um, sites, for example. You can map those four sites as well. Um, no, I don't have anything here, but this is a demo, so. Okay, so, and also quite important as well is the destinations enforced. So you also have global list and, and, and uh, global allow list and global block list. What it means is this is the first step of the, the first step of the, um, the policy. Wherever it comes, it always apply this first before actually it drills down on the policy. Um, and also a really interesting thing when it comes to troubleshooting, you can actually from the whole, from an identity, whatever it is, you, in the destination, actually, you can test and run a test saying, um, for example, this user want to reach this particular destination, what's going to be the outcome? Actually, it runs a simulation behind the scenes and actually is going to give you, um, is going to give you the, the outcome that actually if you implement uh, a new policy or actually if you need a new policy at all. <clears throat> um, okay. I want to okay so we went through the dashboard um via um, we went through the dashboard to kind of uh, already the reporting but um you can also schedule different reports based on different security security categories or content categories um <clears throat> you can basically uh, generate a report per identity so in fact it's pretty cool that actually you can do that all uh, of that in in here um okay so uh i'm looking for okay so these are basically the whole categories uh, that you can see here so this is per the most visit categories that you can see uh, there is, you know, um, this actually is consumed uh, by the whole uh, by the whole identities that you have currently. I'm trying to get where is it? Uh, it's reporting, but then it, ah, okay. Okay. So we were here before. In fact, that you can create as well um um reporting based on uh based on the applications that been approved and blocked and etc so <coughs> sorry so this is actually um a really interesting uh, way to uh to detect and um and, and mitigate and mitigate certain risky applications that that are not allowed on your your business so okay and there is okay so load management um this is actually where i was showing you earlier if you are um if actually following the gdpr compliant actually you can change your storage here for uh, in this case a europe um a european data center Frankfurt all your data so when I mean data is, is not going to capture uh, the whole packets what is going to do is basically um, have your basic information in terms of DNS queries and in IDs that you in fact that you can reverse it and actually 
Um, so yeah, there is also an op uh, important thing to, to mention here. Actually, you can use also to, you can use AWS to also logging um, if you are actually um, an AWS customer or you actually, if you have uh, some, um, or some appetite for, for, for cloud in, 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 in the next, uh, in the next project or in the next uh, quarter, that actually is something that you can look as well. <clears throat> so last but not least, API keys. So API keys is quite important where actually you can start looking at, uh, consume the, the product in a different way um so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend too much time on this but actually is an api um it supports api as well so it's quite important that actually in the the documentation is is well written uh we've been doing some interesting things uh using api uh more than happy to show you um but yeah actually this is something very very handy when it comes to you know deploy or give or have a, a different look on um on the api or eventually on the and eventually you know um hook up with other applications that you might have on uh, on your prem that you like you know, to correlate some information and actually have a more visual have more visuals on what's going on um, <clears throat> um okay i think well we're gonna have a few minutes here so when Okay. Okay. So, Meraki, handy. I think I'm. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um... Okay. Cool. Right. So, Meraki. So, Meraki is. Um, Meraki is a is a. They started as a, a, a cloud Wi-Fi provider. What they what they what they do is they're as you as we know as a as a as a cloud Wi-Fi provider. <clears throat> so they everything uh, that their um, their the controller Wi-Fi controller is on is not on prem. They don't they don't have actually a a, um, a Wi-Fi controller on prem. So everything is run is is cloud based, right? So, and they have other products as, uh, you know, Wi-Fi switches, also um, firewalls, um, also uh, video cameras as well, uh, CCTV cameras um, and other products. So the reason actually to speak a little bit about the, the Meraki here is about actually how can we benefit, maximize uh, the utilization of um, your Meraki and also if you are looking for Umbrella or vice versa, right? So, I mentioned earlier, so API actually is the key for this integration. So, <clears throat> whoops, this is not expected. Why Chinese? <laughs> This is what I love. This is why I love demos. Every single thing can be. Okay, I actually have this open here. So, for example, API. What you can do on the Meraki actually push um, on the firewall, for example, or on the Wi-Fi, or even on the switching. Actually, a specific policy um, on from the from the, the the Cisco umbrella, right? So rather than Rather than you um, blocking here, uh, for example, particular applications, a layer seven rule, uh, and in fact that you can map these uh, categories, uh, applications or content to a certain policy in your umbrella. So rather than you have two points of uh, management, in fact, because if you think about it, a user can be um, can be um, on prem or uh, hooked up, you know, in a wire or via Wi-Fi, right? So in this case, rather than have two different policies, will you know you will have spent two time two times more of time to configure those. You actually have you push the policy from the umbrella, which you basically is your first contact with the internet, right? 
and in fact actually you 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 automate that process in one single um in one single click so uh it's basically look at it as a um, look at it as a um, um right so that is what everyone is every single customer is looking at so right a single plane of glass where actually i can manage all for all so <clears throat> But what I'm saying here is um, the security can be anything else, right? So in, in fact, that you can also actually this is for this particular SSID, but for a different particular SSID, so it could be could be different. And in fact, this has the same, but um, is able okay. not linked. This cool. So for example, this particular SSID, in fact, is not linked with any profile. So actually, you don't benefit. This particular SSID doesn't benefit from uh, the umbrella itself. So, basically, uh, what he says is, you know, you are exposed, and also you have, um, and also you have two. There is two ways actually you have to configure, you know, to 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 make this particular SSID, this particular part of the network, uh, you know, um, um, protected. So, so so yeah. So. This is actually was a quick, a quick, um, a quick overview of Meraki that can do on the API level. There is much more things that it can it can do, but definitely, um, I really recommend if you are if you are a Meraki or an Umbrella, you want to maximize or vice versa. And actually, if you want to maximize uh, the benefits of the product, I think uh, integration uh, between those products definitely is gonna is a must. So. Um, okay, okay. So I think uh, I think we are running a bit over time. Yeah, I think so. Sorry for that. All right. In terms of deployment, so we just to cover again this. <clears throat> so the deployment is um, thirty minutes, no more than that. So not for the advanced advanced um, uh, integration because that requires more time and planning, right? But as a quick thirty minute deployment, actually we've launched um, we've actually deployed a trial a few weeks back with a customer, and over the first hour, he saw three hundred malware uh, kind of um, requests. So he was basically holding tight on his share when he saw, okay, I, I got these guys. so um, and just you know it's not doesn't involve any this deployment doesn't involve any hardware, okay this is all full cloud based. Uh, and the changes that we need to do is basically at the DNS level. So on your eventually on your server or or on your DNS kind of um, hierarchy, or even on your uh, on your laptop. If you want to just test it, that's fine. We can use actually um, the roaming client, or eventually just change uh, your um, your DNS um, on the on your laptop to basically use the the Cisco umbrella ones, uh, and and that is real. There is no there is no much complicated process in you know uh, har uh, ordering har um, ordering hardware and you know deploying on prem and all that consuming. No, it is all full uh, cloud cloud based. Okay. All right, so. I'm sharing the screen. Yeah. Oops. There you go. Okay. So, <clears throat> so Q and A. Um, I'm really thank you, uh, everyone that's been attending uh, the webinar. I'm really sorry for just drag you a few minutes minutes over. I think if there is any, uh, Andy, I hope you can sort that out for me, please. Um, okay. We're gonna. Hold for a few minutes if there is any questions or <clears throat> okay, you cannot see it. Okay, let me check here. Um, I think there is no questions really, Andy. Okay, all right, that's fine, Andy. No worries. Um, if there is any questions, I will I will follow up. Uh, so yeah, shouldn't be a problem really. Okay, what what's next really? So um, 
as next is basically you know if you if you are comfortable what we show in fact that you if you need more information uh, about this umbrella uh, feel free to reach to reach us out uh, what we we gonna uh, send you an email out is about you know having a free trial um, 30 days so and you can you know test it and, and see actually how it works and actually is, is feasible to you in terms of uh, deployment actually what you are looking uh, for to you know um, keep your security stack up uh, on this uh, based on what we've been we've been speaking about it uh, over this uh, this webinar um so yeah and that's it really um andy do you gonna say some words i think the main thing is the the trial is such a good way forward um, the ability to see it in action on your own uh, network just makes everything so much easier to comprehend. When you go onto a demo, if you're demoing from a kind of a D cloud or one of the Cisco demo sites, it all gets a bit complicated and everything because they want to show you everything. But when you actually see it running in your own environment, you can then actually start to see the benefits that it gives you. And there's no reason it needs to be complicated. You can do it with two or three laptops running the roaming client and you can keep it really as simple as you want to um, as long as you can see the benefits of it that that's that's all you really need and um, both myself and Ruben can work with you to make those trials a success so you get the, the most, most most from it I mean that's the, the best call to action there is try it yeah you know not everything you know there is uh, little things in life they are free isn't it and it's uh... <laughs> So uh, I think uh, a free trial is definitely something that um, you guys out there should should try. Uh, you know, you don't have anything to lose, so um, try it. You know, if you if you feel that you know it's something that you wanna wanna discuss, you know, um, you wanna discuss more about it, just give us a give us a shout uh, to me. So um, and yeah, I will follow up with you, um, everyone that is on the. On the webinar um and yeah and we we go from there okay uh let me check actually if there is any more if there is any questions so okay i think that's it let me check uh, i think i'm still looking at things i have to have to have some training on this thing mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> okay so yeah there is no actually questions here so far um, okay and i think we can um we can we can close it um thank you very much for everyone's time um andy really appreciate your uh your commitment to do this with us and hopefully we uh, we speak soon no problems at all i've got a couple okay. of things to send you that you can share with uh the people that will actually just add to that story as well yeah that sounds good to me okay all right thank you very much everyone and hopefully you have a great day ahead right thank you bye take care bye bye